got roamers? No problem. In the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of my Rainbow Six Operator series. In this episode, Jackal. Jackal is a hunting operator, well-rounded in terms of speed and survivability. His specialty lies in tracking enemy roamers and lurkers. On a team of attackers that's very push-heavy, you can rely on Jackal to take down these roamers which will attack from the flanks. Jackal will more often than not spend most of his time skulking around floors, separate from the objective room, eventually helping track down the final hiding spots of defenders holding angles. He provides unique anti-roamer capabilities that aren't really offered by other operators, and is a perfect choice to deal with them. Jackal's ability allows him to scan the recent footsteps of enemies, revealing the location of the enemy to you and your teammates for a certain period of time. When scanned, the last known location of the enemy is revealed with a red marker, similar to how enemies can be scanned with drones or cameras. The last known location is cycled three times in intervals of about 10 seconds. So it's not a wall hack, but it can help you distinguish the location of an enemy from one room to another, and if you react quickly enough, you can wall bang them through destructible cover. Those are the specifics of the ability in general. Keep in mind that the enemy's footsteps don't stay there forever. There's a certain window of time where the prints will disappear. In other words, they have to be recently made. But if you know the general location of an enemy, it can either help you or teammates take that enemy down, and that is a very, very useful thing at the right place and the right time. You can also get a general idea of an enemy's last known location from a distance, even if you can't really get into range to scan the prints without revealing yourself. Jackal's ability allows him to supplement his team in a unique way. On a tier rating scale, I wouldn't necessarily put him at the same level as a breach operator like Thermite or Habana, or an anti-electronics operator like Thatcher, but he definitely serves as an interesting complement because of this, and I think he's a valuable asset in the right position. For example, alongside Thermite, Thatcher, Blitz, and Sledge, you have a powerful breaching and fragging capable team that can rely on Jackal to make sure they're not caught off guard by really mobile roamers like Kavera, Bandit, or Jaeger. Once they've reached the objective room, they can rely on him to help them clean up the stragglers. Jackal has access to a number of good weapon options. First and most commonly used of these is the C7E Assault Rifle. Middle of the road in most aspects, it excels at medium to long ranges, but can be kitted out for close range too. It's Jackal's most commonly used primary, because you can't really go wrong with it, and it shares a lot in common with other standard ARs, with all the same attachment options you're already used to by now. It carries a strong upward pull that eventually curves to the right. With enough practice, it's quite manageable. Damage-wise, the weapon is very, very strong. Coupled with the relatively high rate of fire at 800 rounds per minute, the gun carries high DPS and can kill heavily armored defenders with three center mass shots from long range. This long range power makes it a highly lethal and highly effective assault rifle. The PDW is an interesting choice for Jackal in that it's an SMG, the only one available to the attacker's side. But this gun, unlike the SMGs the defenders carries, gets 50 round drum magazines. It'll go through that magazine faster than you might think, because the rate of fire on it is pretty high, but a certain question from time to time, to reload or not to reload, will be negated. Its recoil pattern goes up strongly with a similar right curve that the C7 has, but it's still manageable enough. On lightly armored targets, it'll take 4 shots at long ranges to kill. Perhaps the most noticeable aspect of the PDW, though, is its incredibly good hipfire accuracy, which makes it often seen with a laser sight and close range optic combination. The Spanish pump shotgun is as powerful as its intimidating profile would lead you to believe. Its main advantage? Damage over range. Typically not an aspect shotguns are known for. In this test, with two two armored opponents, one wielding the British 870 and the other the Spanish gun, the latter did almost 30 points worth of damage, much higher than the competitor. While handling characteristics like cycling time are worth factoring into the comparison, this weapon still makes an excellent choice for Jackal in the fact that it holds good long range lethality and the ability to breach without breaching charges. As for sidearms, the Spanish handgun has pretty good damage characteristics and a good enough magazine size to help it serve its role as a good finishing weapon very well. And more importantly, it comes in some sexy finishes. What about the sidearm shotgun? This is where loadout combinations get pretty interesting. Its damage, for a shotgun anyway, quite frankly, isn't very good. 
and you'll have to rely on good aim to get all your pellets on target to make the thing useful. But it's a sidearm, and you shouldn't be duking it out with this thing on the regular anyway. But it is a shotgun, and you can do shotgun things with it. In particular, it's very good at breaching hatches. It doesn't have the same kind of breaching power as conventional shotguns or buck skeleton key, but it can serve its purpose in a pinch. It's an out-of-the-box piece of equipment, and you can use it to your liking if you wish. If I'm not running the primary pump shotgun, I'm usually running this. Jackal's most versatile loadout, and arguably most meta, is the C7E with an ACOG scope, foregrip, and barrel attachment of your choice. I'm personally a fan of the Flash Eider. Alongside it, I run the short shotgun plus smoke grenades. The shotgun's ability to take out hatches is very useful at times, and the assault rifle can operate effectively at just about any range. There are of course other ways you can cut out the assault rifle. You can do the common close range sight combined with an angled grip and laser for a more CQB style of play. Experiment and see what you like. If you really don't like the shotgun, you can swap it out with the pistol, which is good in its own right, and then use the breaching charges instead. If you like running Jekyll's AR with a close range sight and a laser light, you might want to consider using the PDW and kit that out the same way, or you can use it with an ACOG and a foregrip. Obviously being an SMG, the thing will naturally be more suited to close range engagements, but its hipfire accuracy somewhat negates the downside that the ACOG gives you when you're up at point blank ranges with enemies. All around the PDW is a solid main weapon choice that can rack up kills in quick succession. Take a secondary of your choice. Alternatively, running the primary shotgun gives you even better breach capability than you would have with the secondary, so you don't need to worry about not running breaching charges here. It's a pretty powerful shotgun in its own right, and if you play Jack a little bit more like Sledge, you can wallbang people you've tracked down without much of a hassle. So no sense in running breach charges here, and no sense in not running the pistol, unless you want to use two shotguns. You can run a laser light, just understand the risks involved with it. And my personal optic of choice with the primary shotgun is the hollow sight. Jackal has good anti-roamer capabilities, but he can have a hard time with other hunters like himself. Jackal often plays games of cat and mouse with Kavera, who can leave a trail behind, but moves quickly and silently enough to make tracking her down a challenge. Sometimes, though, just getting the general location of her can be very, very helpful for your teammates. Pulse is also a common threat, since scanning him will probably cause him to start looking for you almost immediately. Operators that don't have these counters, though, like Jaeger, Bandit, or Valkyrie, will have a harder time dealing with you. Always make sure you got your headphones on, and listen for enemies so you don't get caught off guard, and use your drone as much as you can. When playing against Jackal, try not to panic if you get scanned. Sometimes you'll end up moving and catching yourself in the line of enemy fire when you don't have to. For defensive operators and point defense guys, it's best to stick with your teammates and hold as many angles as you can. But Jackal isn't impossible to counter. Sometimes you can use your last known position as a bait. Since your position is revealed to the whole enemy team, you can camp with a shotgun and just let the kills come on in. Pulse is particularly good at this because he can tell when an enemy is coming up close to him. If you're in a position where Jackal is peeking you from a long distance, keep in mind his long range accuracy and damage with his assault rifle are very good. Your friendly Kavera might be able to deal with him better than you. Running around enough to a number of different floors and stairwells though can often confuse a Jackal player as they're unable to get a proper read of where you are with their ears. When dealing with your counters as Jackal, always keep the enemy team composition in mind. If you see an enemy Pulse or Kavera, it's probably wise to take a bit of caution as you move about the objective building. With the AR, you have a damage at range advantage over the two of them, so it's probably not always advisable to rush them if you can help it. If you have another high movement speed fragger on your team like Ash, this disadvantage can be negated to a certain extent. Buck can benefit from your scans too, and can reveal enemy hiding spots with a skeleton key very easily. Jackal is an operator that serves as a good complement to a team in so many scenarios, and you really can't go wrong with picking him if you already have a solid comp. Check your corners, and just remember, they always leave something behind. Thanks for watching.
If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel to see the next episodes in the series as they come out. I plan on covering each operator in the game. You can vote for the next one with the link in the description. Check out my Twitch channel too, a lot of the gameplay clips I use for these videos come from my streams. If you have jackal tips of your own, leave them in the comments sections for others to see them. Good luck out there, and give them hell.